Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a carving knife. This is a blank from Beavercraft and I did a video recently on their carving and chip carving knives. But today we're going to be making the handle for this so you can very affordably buy carving knives, make your own handle. It's very simple, very easy and stay tuned to the end because we're going to be giving away a blank. Let's dive in. It is very important to pick the right wood, and by the right wood, I mean it really doesn't matter what you pick. Um, something hard, something that's fun to work with, something that you like. This is more to do with the appearance of the wood, and I have a lot of them here. I have a box of scraps that I like, but of course this is me, so we are going with Live Oak. Uh, this is actually a leftover scrap that I got from Tally Ho years ago. This is a, a knife that I use quite a bit and I really like its shape. I just wish that it were more octagonal and I want to do something very similar to this. It is relatively comfortable in the hand and I like it. So we're going to start by marking off a line all the way around so we can rip it down to approximately the thickness I want. I'm going to make it a good bit bigger than that uh, so that I have something to play with. A big tooth saw will work well, however this is murderous material to get through um, so yeah it's it's something you've really got to work at for a while live oak is not easy to work with but it is incredibly rewarding so we're going to resaw that down or i guess it's small enough you could call it sawing <laughs> and then we're going to smooth off a reference face from that reference face we can then mark off the second dimension and we can cut a chunk out of that so i'm going to start by cutting a stop cut and then come in and rip down to that so this will create the blank that I need. This is a good bit bigger because I need to plane it down smooth as well as I'm going to make a kerf right down the middle of this so that I can sandwich the blade on either side. The easiest way to do it is to cut down um, off center of the center of the block. So if your iron is a 16th inch thick then you want to move off center by a 32nd of an inch or a little bit more because you're gonna to have to plane off the surface. So I'm setting on there the thickness of the blade and then putting a mark down it that I want to rip down this line. So we can do the whole thing over again. You can see in this case, I'm gonna do it a little bit thinner, uh, a little bit differently. I wanna use a, a thinner saw. Um, so my tenon saw will work very, very well in this. Um, a lot of tenon saws are actually a bit fat, um, but this one is a very nice thin curve and leaves me with a nice clean line. So we're gonna rip all the way down that and then we've got two surfaces but the problem is they have saw marks on them and we want to join them together so i'm just going to take off the minimum i need to smooth them out and clean them up unfortunately with live oak you're always going to get some chip out and tear out it doesn't matter what direction you're going you're going against the grain and so we need to mark out uh, where the actual iron will fit into this so i laid the iron on there and marked out its size made a little bit of, with the marking gauge and then i can come in and very very lightly uh, chip in and create a stop mark along either side of it and then down in the end. Now this is just a hair over a quarter inch wide. So I'm gonna come in with my quarter inch chisel and with the bevel down, you can remove little chip after little chip after little chip until I take this down to the depth I need. I have a small depth stop gauge that I set up to the thickness of the iron and that will allow me to know when I've reached the right depth all the way along. So this stabbing motion, actually holding onto the tip and moving it forward is an incredibly powerful skill to learn. It gives you a little bit of control without overforcing it. But if you don't quite have that, then grabbing a mallet is actually yeah, pretty good. Steps. And yes, this thing is sharp. Uh, so let's actually tape this up before we really start working on it because otherwise you're gonna end up with blood on the work and every project requires a little bit of a blood sacrifice. Now we wanna make sure this fits down all the way in and the first test wasn't quite where I wanted it. I need to go a little bit deeper and so I did take the line a little bit deeper and push it in until it fit into the one side perfectly flush. At this point, I wanna create a good shoulder up here. And so I could plane this off, but I found it a little easier to actually saw it off. Gets me really close to what I want. Come in with a light shaving from the chisel and we have a nice shoulder. Um, it'll be pretty close to a, a finished surface. We'll do a little bit of detail on it once it's all glued up, but uh, otherwise uh, that'll work. I'm gonna use some 30 minute epoxy. Um, I wouldn't use a five minute epoxy on this. I want something a little bit stronger than that, but 30 minute is usually a really good balance. And so I'm gonna fill up one side, push it down in there, make sure it squeezes up all the way around it, then smear it on the other side, and then put the two together. You don't need a huge amount of clamping pressure, just clamp it until the gap is closed enough for you, and uh, that's all you're going to need. Um, unfortunately on this one, there was a little bit of twist in it, and so I had to uh, put a little more force into it as the live oak loosened up. 
So we can put a few clamps on there, set it aside to dry up. Yeah, you don't need all of them, but it, if you got to use it, I guess. <laughs> so now with the magic of editing, it is done. We can take it apart and start doing some of the finish on it. First thing I want to do is get a reference surface on the joint and make sure the joint is nice and tight. Um, it is pretty good, though with Live Oak there was a little bit of chipping, so there's a few spots in there that aren't amazing, but that's just part of light oak, Live Oak. There are gaps and voids in Live Oak. It's not a perfectly smooth, solid surface. We're going to um, joint this all up and hit all four sides so we end up with a surface that is um, smooth on all four sides. Once I get all four sides smooth, I'm actually going to start tapering them. I want it to be slightly thinner up by the tip and thicker by the bottom. And so you'll see I'll do strokes that don't go all the way through and uh, just stop where I want them to be. Once I get the right shape to it that I want, then I'm going to chamfer the corners. I don't want the rounded shape of the knife I was showing earlier. I actually want the chamfered corners. They feel good to me. I know I'm different. Everyone's a little different, but th that's what we're going to do. After we have chamfered the corners, made it into an octagonal rectangle, we're going to then chamfer the ends. Um, the butt on this is actually rounded ever so slightly. Um, it's down about an eighth inch from one side to the other. And then we can chamfer the corners. Some of them it's easy to come into the plane, and some it's actually just easier to come in with the chisel and get that nice clean edge. Um, in some cases, it's actually easier to grab a file and file the chamfer down. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways to do it, and each one has its own pro and con, and um, different methods are, are fun. The epoxy that's squeezed on the top with a very, very delicate hand, we can come in and peel that off and chisel everything back to the main surface. And just like that, with a little bit of fiddling here and there, you have a finished knife. Now for the finish, of course, this is this channel. We're going to do boiled linseed oil and paste wax. And with live oak, oh, live oak and boiled linseed oil are just, they are made to go together. You get this amazing grain that suddenly explodes and the color differences, the light and the dark and the swirls. This is just pure heaven. I'm going to let it soak up as much as it wants, um, probably leave it in the boiled in suit overnight, and then I'll come in with the paste wax and buff it down. So here's after the, the first soaking of boiled in suit oil and the colors in this and the swirl. It is an absolute pleasure to work with, and I'm in love with it. So we can take the tape off and take it for a test drive, make sure she's good and sharp and uh, straight from the factory, she is ready to go. Um, here's a chunk of walnut, which is relatively easy to work with, but it gives me a nice clean surface. I'm really looking forward to doing some uh, detailed whittling with this delicate tip on there. You have to be very careful not to damage it, but uh, you can get some very detailed cuts. This one is going to be a lot of fun to play with, and I love the handle on this. The live oak is just beautiful, and yeah, this is going to have a lot of fun. So if you want to win one, stay tuned. We're going to be giving one of these blanks away. Yay! fun for everyone. So there you have it. I am in love with how this came out. Once the BLO hit it, this thing is incredibly gorgeous and it is, it's comfortable. It's the way I like it. It's a simple, smooth handle, octagonal so you can feel it. This is what I want in a carving knife. This is comfortable, this is fun, and it's me. You're going to want something very different and that's one of the fun things about making your own with a blank. You can make the handle however you want in whatever shape you want and make it comfortable to you. Speaking of which, we're actually going to be giving away another blank. Last week, Beavercraft provided a full set of chip carving knives for the giveaway, and these are all going to MC Creations. Congratulations, you won this full set of carving knives. I just need your shipping address, and we'll get them in the mail to you. This week, we are giving away another knife blank exactly like the one I used. So all you have to do to win that is throw a comment down below, and you'll be entered for a drawing to win that. So good luck on that. So I hope you like this simple little build. I know it's really easy, it's really simple. It is an affordable way to get into whittling. Uh, some of the whittling knives can be incredibly expensive. Even if you buy these, which are very affordable, they're still going to be relatively expensive for a full set. You can buy the blanks at an incredibly low price, make your own handle, make it exactly the way you want it and comfortable, and they will work great for you. I'll leave a link to the blank down below and other information. Thank you to Beavercraft for providing the one for the giveaway. This is a phenomenal little tool, and I'm looking forward to doing some work with it. You'll be seeing a few chip carving videos coming up where I'm going to have fun with these. So I think that's about it for today. I hope you liked this. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. If you didn't, please let me know down in the comments below. If you think there's something I could have done better or something you would do differently, let me know that as well. I'd love to read through those. A lot of times I learn some new things. So uh, let me know that down there. Also, if you want to help out a little bit more, you can hit like and subscribe and share. Those things really do help out. Speaking of helping out, one step more is to join Patreon. If you become a member 
scrolling over on the side or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. That really helps out the channel. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. We are supported completely by the viewers and don't do sponsored videos. So I can have whatever I want to say is what I want to say. I hope you like that. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Oh, this is so nice to meet you. Why is Live Oak called Live Oak? Because just look at it. That grain is alive. Happiness is in the eye of the beholder. Or in this case, it's in my hand. And just like that, you'll you'll be a little.